Hey, Senda. Hey, Phil. Do you want to talk about running online games? Yeah, still seems pertinent. <laughs> still seems more <laughs> pertinent than ever. Yep. <laughs> Cue music. Welcome to another episode of Pandas Talking Games. I am your host who's got maybe more sleep than the other host, Phil. And I am your other sleepy host, Senda. You are sleepy. I, I am. You Did you intentionally time that so that you would start the saying the opening right as I yawned? Yes. <laughs> Only when it was funny. <laughs> All right. Well, on we tonight's show, yeah, we are going to, um, we have a cool topic from AD and David on Twitter, um, and it is, what are some good tools and strategies for running tabletop RPGs remotely in this quarantine era? And uh, and David uh, bribed us with pandas. Yes. Technically red pandas, but they were yes. pretty cute. So we, They're uh, so cute. We, we still allow it. We um, accepted them. Yes. Um, so listen, it's not like we haven't in past chit chats talked about online gaming. And I think maybe way back in March, um, we probably dove into a little bit of this when the quarantine first hit. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about some of this on Misdirected Mark as well. So I, I feel like both of us felt like we've done this topic. But like when we look through the immediate backlog of episodes, we were like, well, we've not done a whole topic dedicated to this. So... I mean, I think it might have been that, like, we've done bits and pieces of it in yeah, different so, places. So we're going to just compile it all into a single episode. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? So we're playing online games now a all lot. the time. Yeah. And our <laughs> positions on these are kind of refining, revolving, starting, to, you know, I'm starting to notice like nuances f that are different from like my tabletop, you know, my face to face experiences and things like that. So we're going to compile, you know, where we are right now with our best practices for online gaming. Uh, hopefully a few topics that um, that we haven't mentioned before and probably a few that you've heard. Uh, but we've got we picked four areas we wanted to talk about tonight. And uh, we think that'll that'll comprise the show. Um, Actually, five. We've picked five areas we're going to talk about tonight. <laughs> a bonus one. A bonus area. <laughs> we picked a bonus area, an additional bonus supplementary supplementary error area that we'll we'll discuss as well. Uh, so, in which case, since we're now doing five, and it's now going to be so much more work than <laughs> so doing so much longer. <laughs> um, do you want to get us started by telling us by telling me? And everyone who's listening, what our first uh, topic of discussion is. Yeah, and then I'm going to immediately toss it back to you because it was one that you were interested in chatting about, which sure, is sure. mics. So tell me, like, wh why why do you consider mics to be an important part of the conversation for online gaming? And um, and then you know your thoughts about said. Yeah. Game. So I mean, like, let's cover. I mean, let, let's cover the easiest, most obvious part, right? Mics important because you're on Zoom. Like, so yep. people need to hear you talking and uh, that's important, right? So I, the thing about mics, the thing I wanted to bring up about mics were that um, I have different mics for different things. Um, when I am recording with you or recording Mr. Active Mark, I have my Audio Technica, right? It's on a boom, you know, it's on a boom, um, boom arm mic stand. I've got a positioned, like, you know in front of my in face your face eat the mic nom, yeah. nom, nom, nom. and i mean you've got you've got an audio technica as well you've got it on a swing arm that's like sitting in front of you at your desk which you use for recording this show and you used um in the past when you were recording sas geek right yeah and i also actually literally if i look to the left i also have a, a yeti 
a Blue Yeti, which was what I used to record on, but it picked up a little bit too much background noise in my house. I got a Blue Yeti in the box, in my like mic equipment box right next to me as well. Do you really? Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Well, you, not. I'm sorry. I don't have snowball. the Blue. I have the Snowball. I have the yeah, Yeti yeah, Snowball. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, when did you get a, when did you yeah, get yeah, a no. Blue? Yeah, yeah, no. Snowball was, <laughs> snowball was, my first, uh, was my first mic. We must be podcasters. Right. But here's the thing. When I run online games, I don't use this mic. Yeah. When I run online games, I use a headset with a uh, built-in boom mic. Yeah. Now, it doesn't sound as good as this mic, right? This mic is uh, this mic is pretty like as in terms of quality. This mic is very good and makes me sound very good. My yes. boom mic does not sound um, this rich, right? Like it's it's clear, but it's like more like flat, right? Like it's not as you know, for lack of a better term, it's not as buttery as buttery. like, right? like <laughs> it's just flat. Are you but, a Chardonnay? Yeah. But Do you come oak aged? <laughs> yes. Yes. But here's the, here's my point to this is, and this will dovetail into our second point in a second. But if I had to sit and run a game with this thing pointed at me, like in my way and having to get into the optimal position for it, which is, you know, fairly close to it. And I've like, and I had a table full of stuff and whatever, like this thing's a pain in the ass. Like it's not comfortable. What's comfortable for me for running a game is not to worry about the mic and just have the boom mic like fixed to my head. So if I turn my head, the mic stays with me. Unlike, <laughs> unlike like this right nonsense. Right now. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but those, I mean, these things are important, right? Like, it's its not that you need to be at record quality, which I think is my main point here, right? Like, if you're if you're like, oh, I need to get a new mic, I need to get like a serious mic or whatever for my online games, you really don't. Um, you need a decent mic. And I say decent, meaning that you've got to be better than the mic that's built into your computer, less than the like mic you would use to record a podcast and you need something that's like fairly reliable now i don't use a bluetooth mic for um i don't use a bluetooth mic for rpgs like i have a bluetooth headset for work but i don't use one for rpgs because i don't want to have to manage battery yeah i, I like I prefer my mic to be plugged in so that if my game goes long or, you know, if I'm playing a couple games or I forgot to recharge it, like I don't run into a case where my mic, where my headset or my mic dies. Yep. So I like, I like a cabled, I like my, my personal preference, right? Is cabled, um, boom mic head headset. Uh, it gives me the most freedom. Uh, I don't have to worry about my head positioning, and it, and it is clear enough that everyone can hear me. And you can talk with your hands, even if they can't. I can talk see with it. my hands, which and you're not going to smack it by accident. Yeah, I mean, which I run into the risk of doing it every time I'm using this mic. I've been watching you suspiciously mm -hmm. as you've been having this moment with me. Yeah, I mean, um, I've actually had some recent frustration because um, my computer slipped off the couch like, you know, life happens and my headphones were plugged into it when it slid off and landed right on the headphone jack, <laughs> splort, and uh, now my mic works about 75% of the time, so that's annoying. So don't be me. So do you need, is, is the computer, is the input for the computer messed up or just your, oh. your... My, it just landed right on the headphone cable and like cranked oh it so you just need like, i just need to get you just need to make an amazon purchase new well. headphones again <laughs> because i'm telling you every time if they're mm, i have gone through so many pairs of these headphones and it's not the headphones fault i have destroyed them or my cat has destroyed them every single time and this is like my fifth pair sixth pair in like two years <laughs> now i will say like my my whole or my work um my work headset is a uh, inexpensive Bluetooth Logitech headset with a boom mic on it. Yeah. And um, I just put that like, I just throw that on the charger after my meetings are done for the day. You know, like I'll have maybe two or three meetings in a day. And at the end of the day, I just put them back on the charger. And then the next day I take them off, you know, like that night I put them back on my desk charged. And um, boy, they're, I mean, 
they're really well, nice for like not having to worry about your laptop sliding off your yeah, right i mean <laughs> um, that's me i'm i'm sometimes i'm just like that Damn so it. yeah i mean um, are well, you so when, let me let uh, me ask you another question about mics sure sure that's related right like so are you do you like it when people um mute themselves when they're not actively like do you have everyone mute when they're not talking like how do you so, manage mic etiquette in terms of mute not mute so one i'll say this right having played some games with the gauntlet um mm-hmm. with the gauntlet family um i have adopted their um their mute policy but uh it depends on it depends on my players right so like I'm in a house with kids. So like I tend to um, just naturally mute my mic between stuff because um, there's always somebody around somewhere doing something. Right. But like a lot of my players are either home alone or, you know, it's home and it's quiet. And then for my personal games, I'm not usually that picky. Um, In fact, I'm good enough friends with my home players and my game groups are relatively small that if anything gets really loud, we just make fun of that person. Right. Like, yeah. like my, like, fun. like the Rainmaker, the Rainmaker has, um, a new baby. Yeah. And so sometimes we're just like, oh, I, I don't want to use the baby's name, but I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, clearly baby's not happy tonight. Right. Cause you, you can just hear him like raging in the background and you know, I've been a parent like, yeah, my like, my local game group player who has the new baby new. Well, she's not that new anymore. She was born in like March. She's pandemic baby. Um, yeah. She's made it through the pandemic so far. Um, but uh, she showed up in on my birthday LARP last weekend, and uh, we all decided that the baby did it. She was so, having she was having a fussy day, and we we're like, "Oh, that's the murderer." <laughs> so I guess my bottom line is, um, if if I think my environment's noisy. I will immediately mute myself and I tend to mute myself. Um, my gaming, my gaming, uh, headset has an inline mic, so I don't have to go to the software. I just can click the little, I just click the little thingy and it mutes me and then I can unclick it and I'm back. Um, my work one, which (laughs) I screw up all the time has a button on the headset. Oh, but then I never remember, like I'll mute myself and then like, I'll forget. And like, so sometimes I talk and I'm muted. Sometimes um, I've muted both the Zoom call and, <laughs> and the your- mic. And so I unmute the Zoom call and I'm talking and everybody's like, can't hear you, Phil. And I'm like, beep. Oh, son of a bitch. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's um, like I said, I really like those Logitech, the that Logitech headset for work, but I only like it for work. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's but good. yeah, anyway. so. So I, I guess I guess what I guess the the I guess the technique, if we're going back to the original question, is be cognizant of your surrounding. If your surroundings are noisy, then it's really helpful to mute your mic so that uh, your noise doesn't bleed in on anyone else who's trying to listen to the game or trying to um, trying to have their turn or ask questions or whatever. Uh, yeah. But if you're but if you're sitting somewhere quiet. Um, and there's no one around, yeah, then just, I don't know, it's cool to leave it open. Yeah, that's kind of where I am, too. I was just interested to see your take on that and if it had changed. Mm. I'm always more relaxed. I'm always more relaxed with my home group yes. than I am with online groups. If I was going to an online con, I would actually be very, I would be actually very diligent about my mic um, muting. But when I'm home with my friends who I've gamed with, you know, for many, many years, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, when we play at my house in the pre-COVID times, it was not uncommon for my kids to, like, be killing each other upstairs. Right. You know, (laughs) and be in the middle of a game and be like, guys, would you give me one second and, like, have to get up from the table, like, walk upstairs and be like, what the beep is going? You know, like... These, these are, these are my friends. They're, they're, there's no, um, there's no mystery to any of this. But again, if I was playing with strangers, I would be more careful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, cool. So the next one, and we kind of started to feed into this, but um, tell, tell, tell us, because I know that this is a thing for you and I'm terrible about it. Tell us about your mise en place for like online gaming. Right. So I've, I mean, we've talked about this before on the show. Yes. I have written about this on, on yes. Gnomes too. <laughs> I am, I am very picky about how I arrange my space when I play a game, right? And I've, I've definitely we've talked about this where I have a I have a very specific setup for how to arrange uh, my gaming table when I'm GMing. Uh, the same is true for my online games. So um, for each of my games, I have a way I like my both my desk to be laid out. So where my where my dice are because I tend to roll dice. I don't, I don't, as I don't often use the dice roller. That's a preference. And we'll talk about that. I think we'll talk about tools in a little bit. Maybe yeah. we'll talk, maybe, maybe we'll touch on maybe. dice rollers. Maybe. Um, I'm just not a huge, I, when I GM, I'm not a huge fan of it. I like rolling my dice. I also allow my players to do that. I don't make them, they can use the dice roller if they want. I don't force them. Um, so I like my desk laid out and I want to, I want to have my note card, like my index cards to write on whatever, whatever rule books, whatever. But this also, right, the arrangement of your workspace, right, mise en place, also applies to your desktop. Because now that you're running an online game, your desktop is part of that workspace. Uh, and I'm, I've am i been picky about this from work forever. So uh, I do the same thing. I like a particular setup for um, my desktop when I play, which is... Um, Almost always that on one monitor, I have two 24-inch monitors. On one monitor, I have um, on 80% of the monitor, I have roll 20 in a window. Mm -hmm. And then in the other 20 vertically, I have zoom in the um, gallery mode so that I can see all my players in small boxes next mm -hmm. to roll 20. And then on the other screen, I have one note opened up with my session notes because I do all my session notes in OneNote. And often I will have open a PDF copy of the rule book. Yeah. So that if I need to like look up a rule or something. So I yeah, I, I like my other tip is that you're going to have a lot going on, right? If you're running a game online, you're managing all the game parts. Plus you're now managing the online platform. Right, whatever that online platform is, you now have to manage that as well. And so, my best advice is find a way to arrange it so that you don't have that dead air where you're trying to look for something or find the PDF. Like I open, like I get my PDF open and in a window before the game starts. Right, like, and I can do this usually. Like you know me, I like often go out for a cup of coffee before a game. Yeah. Uh, like I don't leave my house to go get my cup of coffee until I've arranged mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> and then I just come back and put the coffee in the spot where it belongs on in my the coffee desk. spot. <laughs> yeah. And then I get started. Um, I find that to be very helpful because uh, it is a thing I don't have to manage while I'm managing everything else. Right. I don't have to wonder like, oh, where are my dice? And look around the table. My dice are always, you know, for Numenera or for DCC, they're always to my left. And for whatever reason, for Forbidden Lands, they're always to my right. And that's, they just are. And just I don't, it is. I don't okay. question, I don't question these things, but um, also the same thing. I get that, get the desktop arranged. Yeah. Uh, even in roll 20, um, I, you know, started making folders for my different games so that like my images and stuff are in a folder. So I don't have to scroll through like the big list of images. You can even do a, you know, this session folder, you know, and put your stuff for this particular session in it, like tokens that you need, whatever, so that you have them right there so you can pull them out. Um, those are also things you can do to kind of arrange your space. So... Basically, springing off of that, the next thing that we actually wanted to talk about was digital wait, tools. Wait, wait, wait! I don't get to ask you a question about that. Oh, you know, you can. You want to know? Do you, do you want to know what my mise en place is for? Um, it's Senda grabs her laptop, the character sheet, and some dice, and like curls up on the couch somewhere and sticks the computer someplace so she can kind of see it. And uh, we are like very different when it comes <laughs> to this. It's really, it's actually really interesting. I haven't been running a ton of games, 
Um, sure. I've been I've facilitated a bunch of games and I've been playing constantly. I haven't really been running things um, or, or like really GMing things from that perspective. Um, and there's a difference to me between facilitating and running because facilitating um, is a lot of like it's for like, you know, when you do like this discord has ghosts in it, right? Like I set up the discord. I walk us all through all the intro stuff. Um, we do all the setup. And then once we start playing, like, I'm not doing anything different from anybody anymore. Sure. Right? Like, I'm just... So, so it's interesting because I think there's also just a difference in terms of the types of games, the styles of games that we've been playing, which means that it hasn't really mattered that I haven't been using my two-screen setup for, like, this kind of thing that I've been just like, yeah! But, like, I've been playing some LARPs, and then I'm like, oh, two screens is better because I want to have my character sheet up over on this screen and the zoom over up, up over yeah, here or whatever, exactly. right? Like, so a little bit, a little bit. But I had such a beautiful transition from your Roll20. I know, but I talked like a, I, I talked a whole bunch, and then That's they don't okay. hear your voice, and people like hearing your voice. So, well, gotta I make, mean, I got to make sure you speak. <laughs> I'm having a night, so like it's okay. I'm gonna be a little bit quieter tonight. Um, so yeah, so digital tools, um, yes. which I know we've talked about a little bit, but um, it's interesting, I think, to talk a little bit more, um, or to just mention some of the ones that we've either been um messing with more or learning new things about or um using even more because it sounds like you've definitely like. Roll20 has now become something that is very much your comfort zone to run in. I think Roll20 and I have a, um, we have a truce. Um, <laughs> and well, here's the thing, right? There's a lot to Roll20. Um, there is. It's more, powerful. There's more features in it than I actually want to use in a game. Like, I'm not... Yeah. Like it's great. It has things like dynamic lighting and stuff like like I I, I don't I I just that's not me. Like I don't do that stuff when I game at home. I'm not going to do it online. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it depends on how it depends on how many tools you want to support um, strategic like combat style play. Uh, right? yeah. Or even they have a lot. Even exploration and stuff. Like here's the thing. I um. I have learned in the in the, the past eight months. I have certainly learned a bunch about Roll Twenty, and I'm yes. very happy to do so. And I I am perfectly fine, um, perfectly fine and happy using Roll Twenty. Um, I still will the second we can go back to face to face. I will transition oh, yeah. all my home games back to face to face. Absolutely, I love yeah. it that much more. But um, Roll Twenty is extra work. Right. It, there are some things I really do like about it. Like the things about like notes and lead, like there's a thing about handouts that you can put in, you can put handouts in a roll 20. And um, I've taken a, I, for my forbidden lands game. And I think my Numenera game, I've taken advantage of using that a bunch because I really like putting them out there. And then the players having access to be able to call them back later, because a lot of times um, because I play every two weeks, like sometimes players don't remember things. Um, or we haven't played in a while or, you know, like an NPC hasn't come up in a couple of sessions, which could mean a couple of months. So it's really nice for if they can just go back to the handout, pull up the NPC and be like, oh yeah, right. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, roll 20 is definitely a thing I've been investing in. There are things I don't, I'm not thrilled about it. Right. Like I don't think dice rolling is very fast in roll 20. Yeah. Um, it, and I think that, you know, it has definitely slowed down my games when we get into like dice heavy, like combats and things like that. Like, I, I think it slows it down, but I generally do like it. Have you tried, because I still haven't tried, and I think we've mentioned it before, and I know we both backed it on Kickstarter. And I know that I have the early access, which I still have not activated <laughs> for uh, the new um, role app. That is supposed to be something similar uh, in terms I, of setting up games, but more focused on um, what we might consider small book or indie games. I did not back that on. You didn't. Oh, I well, in, I did. I, yeah, I know. Uh, I, figured I, if, should, I figured if it worked for you, I would go. I, would I sign should. Up. I mean, I should go look at. <laughs> but no, here's the thing. I, I haven't looked at it and I'm not shopping hard for a virtual tabletop because. Yeah. 
you've spent the time and effort to learn Roll20 and settled in into how it can work for you, right? So, like, yeah, you're set. I, I mean, it's it, Roll20 is Roll20 is exactly what I need. I'm sure that other table, other other ones do it. But here's the thing: it is a piece of software, and it needs to be learned and mastered. And yes. where I am personally. Like, I really need my role-playing stuff to be escape entertainment. Yeah. And I really don't want to have to fight with a new technology at this point, right? So, I know Roll20 well enough. Yep. I use Roll20. Yep. Um, yeah. That's that's at, perfectly reasonable. At a point where I have a bit more bandwidth, if I wanted to get picky and really have, like, kind of a virtual tabletop shootout kind of thing where, you know, like, I really, like lined up like I want these features I want to be able to do x y and z and then really kind of do the um work that I am known to run projects for right like yep. to do that kind of product analysis and you know determine Boy, which recently finished something yeah, like yeah, that you know, at work right. that was like a several month right um, and was and was that yeah I mean that's work right like that's not so energy that's yeah it's a <laughs> lot of work so I I honestly just went with the one I know um, yeah. I will mention a quick tool that I've really kind of, uh, it's a very small tool. I like it. I think probably if people are using virtual tabletops, they're pretty familiar with, but token tool is this little Java app that will take basically any image and make a token and make a, like a token image out of it for you. So like if you have artwork, um, like for Numenera, I go on to Pinterest and find like cool looking character creature kind of things. And then I go drop it in token tool and boom, pop out a token so that if I need to do uh, folks on a map kind of stuff, I have a token you for can. it. Yeah. Nice. Also Pinterest. I mean, Pinterest. So, <laughs> Pinterest, always Pinterest. Well, here's in, the cool. In, in, in inspiration and for that sort of thing, right? For personal stuff. Yeah, and so for virtual tabletop, like I go into Pinterest and get artwork and um, use it as visual, you know, as as visual um, props in my games. Yeah. And that's been really helpful. So it's interesting because um, my game group, we've, we've shifted around a bunch between um, using Google Meet and um, partially because uh, the live closed captioning is really cool on Google Meet. And um, for some reason, one of our players' computers, it was happier on Google Meet, but then sometimes we also use Zoom. Sometimes Zoom is better. Um, and there's some stuff I haven't explored yet with Zoom where you can put, you know, layover or lay. Well, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, because you can put the thing where you have a yes, no, slow down, speed up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know I, I, I forget what the feature is called, but you can make like they're like reactions or something. Yeah, and like those seem to be something that would be really cool, um, especially in terms of like you could implement them for safety and stuff, right? Right. Um, so that's a thing with Zoom that I'm interested in messing with. But um, our main conversations, like our ongoing just like group chat places, Discord, which has also meant that we've done a bunch of things in Discord, like other than this Discord has ghosts in it. Um, and uh, I actually got to play an online LARP for my birthday last weekend, which mm -hmm. I realize I have already said once on this podcast, but it was very fun. And so the thing I wanted to mention about Discord um, is that, and, and this is, I guess, less of a tabletop thing, but it's an exciting sort of piece of how that software and having servers on that software works, since it can have... Sure multiple voice and video channels that you can move between is in terms of recreating a LARP experience in which you may have multiple rooms in which, um, you know, unlike tabletop, when you are playing a LARP, you may or may not see or participate in everything that is happening at all times, right? Um, because you might be somewhere, like physically somewhere else. And so Discord is a fantastic tool for recreating that because it's really easy to go between rooms. So for example, we were playing a murder mystery and we started on the entryway and there were, you know, two bedrooms and an office and a library and we, you know, broke up and wandered around through the house looking for clues and stuff. Right. So um, it's really cool that that discords, I, I don't think that they necessarily intended it 
to be used for this purpose because I think it was sort of invented more for video gamers. But through sheer happenstance, it's a very effective game tool for LARPing. Like well, it think- seems to be the space in which you can best recreate LARP experiences. <laughs> I think that's really cool, right? Like I think that's a uh, much called. I think that's a really neat, um, a really neat feature. It's and that's fantastic. definitely something that I I know that. Um, I know that some of the other platforms like Microsoft Teams and I think Zoom is working on it too are working on breakout rooms. Right. But the thing about breakout rooms, at least to my knowledge, is that it would be hard for me to go from one to another to another. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's the thing about Discord is that I can be in the library talking to my estranged husband. Not really estranged. I just might have had an affair. Um, and then, and then I can be like, well, fine, I'm going, you know, to the dining room and then I can literally just move myself to the dining room. And if there's somebody in there, then I walk into whatever conversation they're having. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's cool. So it's, it's it's really neat. Like that is a way that I had not, it's so obvious in retrospect, but like, okay. So like, that's a really cool thing about discord. There are still many things that I like about Slack as a chat situation better specifically threads <laughs> but but in terms of like um setting up a server that is specific for like this is going to be our server for this game it has all the rooms in it and now we go right like discord does that really well and i'm a fan so here's what i'm going to pull out of that right yeah. so th- there is uh some value in understanding the needs for the tools that you have yeah and matching them correctly like for instance i am a big fan of zoom yep um i don't i I don't i don't have a immediate need for closed captioning so um that hasn't been an issue for anybody in my groups um and i really like zoom quality like i've i've compared to hangouts um i find i find zoom to be um much better like i i it, it is more stable like you and i chat by zoom and when we used to chat by Hangouts, we used to always have like the Hangout the freeze up things. and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it rarely, like, it, it rarely happens um, when you and I are talking. And it never happens when I'm on my home games. Like, when I'm like, when I'm like running a home game, it never, um, it never locks up like that. So I like it. But I, but I pay for mine, right? Because if you don't pay for, if you don't pay for Zoom, you then have 45 minutes. It's 45, which is which is impossible to use for running a game, right? It's well, impossible and you to have use to for like send a out podcast. a new link, and then you have to everybody right. jump back in, and then it's like so. Wah, 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 wah. I so I, I will say this. I will mention another one that is uh, I think is the underdog. Like people are like Google Meet, Google Meet, right? And Zoom, Zoom. But I will tell you. That Microsoft Teams, which is what we use in my office, is very solid. Okay, but is that something that someone can just get? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm going to go look, but but I'm pretty sure you can just, if you have a Microsoft account, you can just use Teams. Let me check. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, well, while Phil checks on that, I'm going to mention one um, other tool that I just heard about kind of recently, which is called um, Synth Story. And it is, or Story Synth. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm having a night. Oh, I might have to look that up. Um, and But it's specifically for, um, for the Queen style card prompt games, where you can put in your own prompt cards to make that sort of shuffle and then uh, put up a prompt situation happen online, which that's I cool. Think is very cool, right? And, and you can put your own in, so you can build your own custom decks of prompts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can um I'm pretty sure with Teams, it looks like it's free to sign up. Um anyway, I, I will say I we use it we use it in my office because we're a full Microsoft um suite. Uh Teams has got uh all the Slack features and a really nice um any really nice web conference. Yeah, I mean I uh my team is all Google, so we use Google Meet for yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> like, I mean, that's like, but also we always call each other on Slack if we're just like, hey, I just have a quick thing. Can I call you? Like, oh, right. my computer's ringing. Like, whatever. Well, it's because it Google is called, doesn't. It is called does, Story Synth, not Synth Story. This is where my brain is tonight. I'm sorry. 
story synth. It sounds really go. cool. Just, just know it, breathe it, feel it, be one with it. Uh, so the other, yeah, I would, you know, like, I, really what I'm shooting for with my online, like my video client is I, I don't even want to mess with it. I want everyone to log in, right? I want to see everybody. And that's the last I want to mess with it. Uh, for the rest of the evening, right? I've got enough stuff to do on Roll20 or whatever. I just, like, I want everyone logged in. I want to be able to see everyone's faces, hear everyone clearly, and go. Yep. Yeah. It's so. storysynth.org, by the way. Good job. Um, you, you... <laughs> look at me. Look at me. I remembered. Um, so we, we just have two other things that we wanted to mention quickly. Um, and, uh, and they are social time and zoom fatigue and they're both, they're, they're kind of opposing forces, right? (laughs) Yes. Because we're all desperate for social interaction. But if, if your current pandemic experience is anything like mine or Phil's, like we've also been spending so much time on zoom, like just doing work stuff, (laughs) Or like you might have even just been spending so much time on Zoom because that's your social life right now. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a thing. But we also don't get to see our friends a whole bunch at the moment. So like having some social time built into your game so that you can actually catch up with people, relax, have a conversation, super important. And then also, um, I mean, the, the thing... The thing about Zoom fatigue is that I'm noticing that my actual play session times are just shorter. You know, uh, my 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 Zoom time is definitely shorter, and I have usually a good chunk of it is social. Yeah. Um, so, which I'm okay with. Like, I'm not trying. Like, I am not trying to force anything to happen. But for instance, I always schedule my uh, games a half hour before when I want to start playing. So everybody logs in about 30 minutes before the game is like when I would like to start the game. And we use a lot of that time to catch up with each other. And depending on my game group and depending on whether we've missed a session or not, because if, if I've missed a session, I might not have seen these people in a month. Yeah. Um, there's other people like Bob who I see like I see like multiple times a week and I talk to him like almost every night on, on uh, mumble and stuff like that. So like, that's not a big deal, but like sometimes the rainmaker or Glenn or somebody like that, I may not have seen them for weeks. So um, yeah, we, you know, often have a uh, very social uh, where we're just sitting around chatting and dropping memes on each other and, you know, just laughing. Um, I, there's definitely a place for it, right? There's definitely a place for, having that time um we i mean i have always and i want to i don't want to generalize for other people but i have always used gaming as kind of the fabric by which um all of my friends in my life exist uh and i like spending time with my friends and before pandemic i had other ways to do that go out to dinner catch a movie those kinds of things um but nowadays, like that, that that call is yeah. my social time, yeah, and my game time, and so I want to be social with everyone first, then I want to game, and then to your point, um, I do find I do find running online games to be more tiring um, than running in person. It is an additional set of skills, right? If we've talked about eight skills, right? Mm. Maybe eight skills was what it was to run an online game and maybe like 10, I'm sorry, eight, eight skills, skills to run a table, a face to face, right. And 10 skills, um, to run an online game because I, I do think you have to manage, um, one, you have to manage your technology Yep. and two, you've got to manage your broadcasting. Yeah. Like if you're GMing a game, you are performing you are performing when you're doing face to face, but you are now performing through a medium. And I will say as a person who has, um, who routinely performs on a medium, right. It, with between the streaming misdirected Mark and, and us recording a weekly, uh, performing across, across this kind of technology is a bit more tiring. It is. It just requires more energy output. I have to be clearer. Yep. When I'm speaking, I have to be a little slower. 
I have to make sure that if I'm describing something, and this goes back to the hand gestures, right? If I'm describing something, I don't know who can see me or not. I can't just say it's this big, right? I got to like, I got to say like, you know, it's maybe it's, you know, 12 to 14 inches long, like whatever, like it's not going to, um, like those things don't register. Um, and it's even harder when you're doing NPCs. Like I always, like I don't do voices, right? I'm, I'm, I'm no critical role. I don't do voices, but I often do um, gestures and mannerisms as part of my, um, you know, portrayal of NPCs. And like that is impacted um, by this technology. So sometimes like I have to do it and then say it yeah. like, like, ah, you see him like fiddling with his hat nervously. Right. Right. Before I could just do that. Yep. But now I got to like, I got to be my, for lack of better terms, right? I have to be my own closed captions on that. Yes. Right. I've got to like, if I'm doing a thing, I got to say a thing. And it's the same thing with combat, right? I can't just be like, eh, and he does, you know, he does one of these, like, because you don't know, like you're listening, <laughs> right? I mean, you can see it, but if you weren't looking directly at the screen when I said that, you wouldn't know either. Well, and there's also just the management part, which actually involves the mics that we were talking about earlier, which mm -hmm. is that if multiple people start talking at the same time, unlike at the table where you can have sort of a quieter conversation and a louder conversation, or, you know, if two people start talking, then like one will, they'll kind of catch each other and one will stop or whatever. Like the way that Zoom just pipes everybody in at the same volume it can interfere. <laughs> yeah, right? it will definitely, it'll, you gotta like, you gotta sort people out and yeah. It's a, it's thing. a thing. It's, it's a, a thing. thing. Like it's, it is more work. Um, and if you don't, like if it's more, you want your game experience to be net positive energy. Yeah. Right? You, you want to get, giving. yeah, spoon giving, right? You want to get out of the game uh, more energy than you're putting into it. And so with Zoom, uh, you are definitely putting, with Zoom, with any online, you're putting a little bit more energy in. So playing shorter may mean that you'll stay net positive. Yes. And that's um, that's kind of been my experience, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, and my games are often punctuated with... Um, scenes followed by like some social chit chat followed by okay let's right let, let's round up let's get like back into the game uh that kind of thing well that's I'm, not uncommon for my groups i mean i've definitely found that it's actually something that's prevented me from getting really involved in online conventions because even when i've showed up i usually show up and play like a game and then i'm like cool that was four hours on zoom i'm good for the day i'm done i can't sit at my computer anymore on my weekend because this is what I do. Well, all I'm the same way. Week, <laughs> like yep, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. Right? So like it just ew, that's about all I got in me. By the so. time, by the time we have gotten, by the time I've gotten to the weekend, on a slow week, I've clocked about eight to ten hours of meetings. Yes. On a bad week, that is more like twenty to twenty-two hours of meetings. Yes. And so yes, four more hours on the like, weekend no. of, of <laughs> sitting in a conference call um starts to wear at you, even if it is um net positive spoons. Like I would really have to um if I was gonna do some sort of online convention, I haven't done one this year. I've been very um I've been, I've been very low profile, right? Very I've been cautious very, about. Uh, yeah, I've been very mindful. My, my time and energy, because I'm like, I don't know if I will I, have energy that weekend. If I was doing four hour sessions, I think I would only play once a day. Yeah, I mean that's. I was like, like I would just I would do a con and I would be like, okay, Friday I'm playing this game. Yeah. Saturday I'm gonna play this game. I was right? very like, like I've been very much like a game a weekend. <laughs> like that was cool. That was fun. I'm good. My my current games are going like two two and a half hours right now. Yeah, that's and that's. I mean, listen, I'm not getting through a lot of material. That's fine. There's like, no rush. <laughs> adventures are taking like many sessions, yeah. but you know, I like you said, I'm also not clocking that against uh, against anything, right? Like I'm, it's fine. And uh, we should wrap this puppy up. Speaking of Zoom fatigue, okay, we can do that. <laughs> um, and in order to do that. 
We're going to need you to tell us about another show on the Mistracted Mark uh, network. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the Gnome cast because I'm on it on episode 105, I think, which should be the next one. Cool, cool. Or else it came out this last Tuesday and I don't know, it might have already just dropped or something, but you should go check it out because it's hilarious. And we went really long and it was my fault. Um, I feel like you learned that from me. Like, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of proud of you. Like, that's good. I was, well, it was not good. I was pretty punchy drunky and uh, like I walked in tired and then I went super hyper, um, which was you great. Know- and it was a topic that I was, I mean, a one hour Metatopia panel was not long enough for us to talk about this topic. So fitting it into a 25 minute gnome cast was also. Not happening. <laughs> I think what's funny is that nobody, like, nobody else knows how to settle you when you're like that. But <laughs> yeah. we have, like... They just let me go. <laughs> right. We have recorded long enough together that I'm just, like, I know yeah, one. I know by tone <laughs> when you're in that space. Uh-huh. And two, I know how to ground you. Yep. Or you take the show by the reins and keep it moving through. Exactly. It was pretty funny, though. It was highly entertaining. I would recommend listening to it, even if you don't care about the topic, because it was funny. <laughs> Very good. Say, Santa, where do people um, where do people reach us on the internet? Well, you can find us on Twitter at Pandas Talk Games. You can find us in the Misdirected Mark forums, which is forums.misdirectedmark.com. Or you can drop us an email, panda at misdirectedmark.com. And Phil, once they find us in one of those places, what can they do with that information? You can leave us a show topic. That'd be um, cool. Yeah, listen. Um, yeah, I do this every week, right? We pride ourselves on doing the show mostly on topics that you want. Um, it's really important to us for us to talk about the things that you find important and um, why it's fun for us. Like, you know, I mean, we talk all the time um, about all sorts of things, but, you know, if we want to, you know, really make something useful for a recording, <laughs> it really helps if we can do a topic of your suggestion. And besides that, really, we both like helping people uh, run better games and have better games. So um, if it's relevant to you, it's most likely relevant to someone else who's listening to the show. So, And apparently we're bribable via... We are bribable. If you, if, if, yeah, if you attach panda pictures to your tweet or your email or whatever, uh, preferably um, real pandas, not red pandas. Mm-hmm. The, the red pandas were pretty cute. But real pandas, the drunk ones. You know the ones I'm talking about. Um <laughs> If you send those, like, we're, I, listen, it will get our attention. We are not above bribery. Um, we do not need money for bribery. We'll talk about the money part later. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, just if you want to bribe us, send us a few panda pictures. It'll catch our attention. Anyway, um, please um, send in topics. We love them. We love them so much. If you like what we're doing, if you like what we're doing here elsewhere on the Misdirected Mark Network, you could always back the Patreon campaign. I told you to get to the money part. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the Patreon campaign um, is at patreon.com slash MMP. Uh, the money goes to um, pretty much everything that needs to be done around here, from web hosting to getting shows set up to replacing equipment. Um, all of that stuff is all made possible uh, by your fantastic patronage. Um, in return... We will invite you to the Misdirected Mark Slack Room for Life. Um, It is my um, oasis in these troubling times. Um, It's been so nice to just be there. Um, You can come join us on Fridays on our um, um, on our Misdirected Mark um, luncheon. I love. Oh, we've had some new people join us recently. It's been so delightful. It's so good. It's so good. I love. I love when people are on there. I love actually getting to. Uh, it's one thing, so there's a couple stages of this, right? It's one thing if you're listening to us and we don't, like, we we may or may not know you. Like, maybe we know you outside of this and you just, like, we know you. It's another thing if I know you because you're now a patron and you're in the Slack room, right? Like, that's fun because I can interact with you. But I know you as, like, a chat icon and a name. Yes. It's, like, a whole other thing if you come to the luncheon. Yeah, and then we and, see your face. And we see you. And hear like, you and stuff. It's great. Um, so Good. I really, really love it. And I encourage people to do it if you are um, if you're free on Fridays, 1230, um, 1230 Eastern. You, if you're 
part of the patron in, in the Slack room, you'll know because it's posted it's in, in the there. announcements. But if you can do yeah. it, if you can do it, we'd love for you to be there. It really is great to actually see everybody face to face, especially in these times. Okay, that's the Patreon. Mm. If you're already backing the Patreon, thank you very much. If you're unable to back the Patreon, we totally understand. Um, but there is a thing uh, that you can do that forwards our uh, our agenda, which even in the midst of mm. a pandemic, civil unrest, and a very, very harrowing election cycle. Oh boy, wasn't um, it though? <laughs> Has I'm not celebrating failed us. again tonight. <laughs> yes. Uh, this this one thing has remained true <laughs> through this trash fire of a year, which is if you listen to us, you will love us. And there is a way to get more people to listen to it. I would have told you to bring the podcast to your Thanksgiving dinner and make your family no, listen. But, but don't since go. hopefully most of you are Please being responsible and go. not going... <laughs> That's not going to work. So we're going to need you to use plan B. And what is plan B? Plan B is that you should leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or the podcatcher of your choice. Because what you're doing when you do that is basically telling strangers that we're cool. And it helps us float to the top of the algorithm uh, so that people find us. Because we sort of failed at SEO. Honestly. Please... <laughs> Help save us from some, our terrible Some mistakes SEO. were made. <laughs> because people who are looking for RPGs aren't usually looking for pandas, but that's us. Anyway, um, good. Uh, that's, yeah, we, we super appreciate everybody who's already left a review. They are heartwarming and give us life and all of those things, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, Especially it really right is. Especially right now. If you leave mm -hmm. one and it's, if you leave one anywhere, just like tell us. We mm -hmm. just want to go read it. It's not going to be weird, but like we can't track all of the different places that you could leave it. So like just, you know, pin me on Twitter or drop me an email or something. Just tell me that you wrote one. I want to go yeah, read it. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Makes me we really happy. It. Good. Cool. Then, um, send up. Yeah. Uh, show me how you're going to arrange your desktop <laughs> for the next game that you run. <laughs> and it better not be just that 13 inch This show is a joint production of She's a Super Geek and Misdirected Mark Productions, the media arm of Encoded Designs. Show me what you got, eh? Hey, show me what you got. Show me what you got, eh? Hey, show me what you got. Show me what you got, eh? Hey, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Show me what you got. Bloop. Hey. Hey, click. Got the waveform. Click, 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 click. Ooh, I should not lean my phone against things on my computer because then if it goes bzzzt in the middle of the episode, then my whole desk will go bzzzt and the mic will go bzzzt. And everybody will be like, what just happened? Are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> Mr. There's Water, thing, Mr. Water a, Bottle's helping me out greatly. There's a thing you do when you, there's a thing you do when you're off your game where you yep. talk really fast. Yep. And you you know tend to be silly. Sure do. Oh, sure I just do. found a I just found a picture of Bria tacos in my cam in my uh, camera roll. Uh huh. Man, I gotta go. You gotta go get more. I gotta Can go get I, some tacos this week while I'm on vacation. I'm just, I'm just gonna tell you right now. Speaking of being off my game and talking really fucking fast, yeah, yeah, and like going to completely off the deep end in terms of punch drunky giggles. Um, wait till you hear the next Gnomecast. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. Poor Rob. <laughs> All right, we should uh, we should not put too much more in front of this show. Nope, we should just we go should do not. the show. Yes, indeed. Okay. You almost caught me mid yawn on that opening. That was close. It was a close thing.